Namaste, Namaste everyone. After a long time, we are meeting through video. We have been away from each other uh, after a, uh, for a long time because of many reasons, you know it. Um, we might have forgotten some of the things. Please do remember that one examination is uh, uh, pending and that is English examination. Uh, somehow you have to write it. So we are going to do something revision for English examination also through uh, video call or uh, sorry through video um, classes and uh, at the same time all seat examinations, neat examinations were announced. So we want to uh, uh, give a uh, just backup for all the things uh, what you have studied. So we will go a little bit slowly because we have enough time. So till June or uh, uh, June 5 or June 6 uh, up to that uh, we will have some CET classes, NEET classes uh, and after that you will have some English classes revision and then we will uh, after completing the English uh, we will have a thorough uh, entrance exam classes. So we will be with you, don't worry. So we will have some uh, um, brush up of the things what you have studied. So let us try to do the things well. Let us try to face what the problems we have got. Hope you are supporting us and we are always with you. And uh, regarding the entrance examinations, always you have to remember one thing. That is, there is no perfect or 100% preparation. Nobody will, entrance, uh, nobody will enter the entrance examination uh, with 100% pre preparation. It is impossible. Because uh, uh, the question paper setter may ask any type of question that is a prescribed syllabus, but questions may be framed in such a way that even if it is within the syllabus, you may not be able to answer. So you, you shouldn't enter into the examination hall uh, with a strong uh, uh, belief that I will uh, definitely answer all the questions and just uh, getting faint if you don't know the answer for the first question itself. That uh, uh, is not the type of preparation. You have to do your best. Even if the entrance examination is very tough, it doesn't uh, uh, do anything wrong because if it is tough, everybody will uh, do bad. So one who is doing a little better in the, uh, all, all the competitions will uh, uh, be in the front. So it is like 100 meter race in a track and all the people will have the same type of track. If the 100 meter race in a, is in a mud, uh, muddy track, of course, all the people will have a muddy track. So you, you, need not worry, you need not worry that there is a muddy track and how to run and all. Everybody is having the same problem. So now what the problem we are facing is, it is common to all. It is not for e one or two. Everybody is facing the same problem. You turn it into a positive uh, aspect. Whatever you have got now is the best opportunity to study. Of course, don't put everything to a single day, morning till evening, reading only the, for the entrance examinations and uh, getting faint in the evening. That is not fair. Take enough amount of rest, take enough amount of en entertainment, only up to a certain limit and then keep on um, preparing for the entrance exam. And while preparing for the entrance exam, another important thing you have to remember is the challenges that we come across. A particular problem, uh, for the time being, you will remember. Uh, if I uh, teach you, if your teacher teaches you a problem, you will understand it very clearly because already you know what is the pulse of your teacher and teacher knows your pulse and as soon as the teacher starts problem, solving the problem, you will understand it. But you will forget it tomorrow. So forgetting is a common thing, you know it. Uh, everybody will forget. One who doesn't forget is it not a, a normal person, is an abnormal person. Sir, I read everything and I don't forget it at all. For the whole life I remember it means he is uh, better he take an appointment from the doctor because something is wrong with him. You, everybody will forget, no problem. But uh, the challenge is you will understand the problem. You will remember it for one or two days. Will you remember it at the time of examination? That is more important because the day previous previous day of the examination, you can't uh, see everything. So the preparation in uh, the previous days, that is that takes a very important role at the same time, remembering all those uh, techniques, all those methods of solving, formulas and everything on the day of examination or till the day of examination, that is also a challenge. So for that, your project should be like this. Don't try to mess up everything Oh, I have left with first PU this chapter, I have completed only the second year few chapters. Don't mess up it like that. 
just study those chapters which are very favorite for you and be an expert in that be a very good uh, you let the all uh, um, or study those questions very properly and you should be a very very good person in all those uh, uh, questions whatever be the type of question asked you must be able to answer it in a proper way and uh, instead if you learn start learning everything and uh, finally if you don't know anything when you enter to the examination hall it doesn't serve the purpose so whatever the chapters you take and uh, whatever you study it should be very very firm and you must be able to carry it till the day of examination I, uh, so let your even if your study is limited don't worry if something is asked in that part you must be able to answer so don't worry whatever is not read don't look into the chapters which have not been covered look into the chapters which have been covered and question yourself can i remember all these things on the day of examination question yourself and test yourself can i remember these types of problems suppose the same problem is asked or a similar problem is asked will you be able to answer it in the day of examination that is the question mark so challenge is not understanding not having enough amount of work in prior of the examination it is the, it is the problem of remembering it and executing it on the examination day on the paper that is very important so for that you need to, you need to have enough confidence enough rest calm mind and everything so you will do that only practice makes here and it is not only the intelligence of course you should have some intelligence some knowledge and some stuff inside the brain everything is needed but you should be very calm and uh, you should be very confident then only you can do it but still you can do up to a certain limit whatever the aim you have even if you can't do a very high or you can't uh, uh, go to the very first rank or second rank, you can have such a rank that you will get a seat or whatever you want whatever you had a name you can fulfill it up to a certain limit so uh, need not worry uh, about what are all the things are happening in the uh, in outside uh, you can have your own preparation so don't waste the day in a day a little amount of time for uh, your next coming examinations theory examinations entrance examination divide it continue that so let us all try to put our hands together and face whatever it has come hope that th those holidays you have got is are uh, for your own benefit you can calmly study the things and you can have a better performance at least you can overtake some or some of your friends and have a better rank if you uh, properly use these uh, holidays so with all these words let us i will be starting about current electricity few questions and i will not be finishing all the questions at a time and i will not be finishing all the synopsis at a time half an hour synopsis half an hour questions i don't divide it like that and i will just want you to accelerate little by little because all of a sudden if i start running you can't join with me so let us start little by little and let us accelerate and then we will move faster so even only current electricity will take a long time to answer or a longer time to finish but we will have a little bit of time so i am not wasting all your times at one hour or one and a half hour per day or 45 minutes per day that's all in the beginning very less later on i will consume little bit more day and still la huge amount of time is left for you so you can do yourself and you can work yourself you can do something related to this and other things also you can go along with me okay so my topic is now current electricity whatever i am dealing with now is current electricity i will take a small part of the current electricity okay that is a voltage divider rule current divider rule resistances in series and parallel now it is very familiar to you because you have studied those things and for the theory exam you know the formulas maybe remembering because long back you have studied you know how many how many days were over after the examination has finished so uh, a long uh, journey now so now i will uh, take a resistor and put it in series a uh, two resistors i will put them in series you know that whenever the two resistors or components capacitors whatever it is when they are in series current through them must be same i is same for both what about the voltage sir shall i get the same voltage in both ah you may get it provided 
provided resistances are same. If the resistances are not the same, then voltage may not be the same. So I will name this as V1 and V2. Okay. So when two resistors are connected in series, current is same through them, but voltage need not be same. Okay. Now you know the Ohm's law, V equal to IR, right? And we have uh, the series resistance RS equal to um, R1 plus R2. These things are common to you. Now, suppose two resistances are given. If you are asked to find out the voltage across any resistor or in some uh, solution, you come across that situation where you need a voltage across a certain resistor. That may not be the problem, but that is a part of the problem. How to solve it immediately? So you can do it like this. What you can do is, here, since the voltages are same, the total voltage when you replace it, it should be V and when the voltage gets divided, you see, look into this formula. We will play with the formulas. V equal to IR. Here you know that I is same in both. You ask the first resistor, R1, R1, what is the current through you? Sir, it is I. Ask R, R2. R2, what about the current through you? Yeah, it is same as R1. I, I am also getting the same current. Okay, I is common. Then how will be the voltages? Directly proportional to resistance. V is directly proportional to R. So more the resistance, more will be the voltage. Lesser the resistance, lesser will be the voltage. So V is proportional to R. So if you want to know what is the voltage across the first resistor, I'll directly give you the formula. I don't want to narrate what, it's a very uh, two or three steps uh, process, but still it is not needed. What is the V1 voltage across the first resistor? It is the main voltage, so I will represent the main voltage V, which is equal to V1 plus V2, into resistance of the same resistor divided by sum of the resistances. So voltage across any resistor is the main voltage, total voltage, into resistance of the same resistor divided by sum of the resistances. Easily you can form the uh, uh, formula, this one. Now, what about the voltage across the second resistor? V2, it is also easy. It is the main voltage into resistance of the same resistor divided by some of the resistances. This helps you to uh, uh, get the values or uh, continue the problem very easily. So, voltage across any resistor is main voltage or total voltage into resistance of the same resistor divided by some of the resistances. And voltage across any resistor, second one, is main voltage into resistance of the same resistor divided by some of the resistances because this is V is directly proportional to R. That is a common thing. You see, after uh, studying this, what type of applications you get here? It becomes very easy to carry the problem. Okay, now, what about current? You know current, current gets divided when the resistances are in parallel, you know it. And uh, uh, suppose uh, when resistances are connected in parallel, uh, right, like this, voltage is same in both, you know it. Suppose this is I is a, the main current and I1 is the current through the first resistor R1, I2 is the current through the second resistor R2. Now, V is common among both because they are in common potential difference. This point and this point are same, so potential difference is same. So, voltage across this is I1 R1, voltage across this is I2 R2. Here is also a two steps procedure and you can study this. You can do it yourself, but I will give you the formula. Sir, when two resistors are connected in parallel, current through both of them are not the same. So, what will be the current through the first resistor? What will be the current through the second resistor? Here you see, take this formula. See how to play with the formulas. I will write I equal to V by R. Because I will try to compare one factor with another by taking some constants. V is constant. V is constant. V is same for both. If V is same for both, I is inversely proportional to resistance. Correct? If I is inversely proportional to resistance, what does it mean? Very simple. More the resistance, lesser will be the current. If you have more humps in the road, lesser will be your speed. No humps you will move faster. So more the resistance, lesser will be the current 
and lesser the resistance, more will be the uh, current. So, if this path is a high resistance path, more current will flow through this. If this path is a low resistance path, sorry, this path, if it is a low resistance path, more current will flow through this. If this path is a high resistance path, less current will flow through this. So, what is I1, sir? I1 is equal to main current this one into resistance of the other resistor R2 divided by sum of the resistances R1 plus R2. So, current through any branch when you have only two branches otherwise you can't apply it. So, these are like tools to solve some problems. I am not giving these formulas uh, that this will be asked as it is. These are the tools to solve the problem. So, current through any resistor I1 is the main current I into resistance of the other resistor, you see 1 and 2, divided by some of the resistances. Sir, what is I2? I2 is current through the any branch is equal to main current into resistance of the other resistor divided by some of the resistances. So, this is how you can solve. So, this helps a lot, to, a lot in, uh, in the path when you solve different problems. So, Current through any resistor is main current into resistance of the other branch divided by some of the resistances. So, here also current through any branch is the main current into resistance of the other branch divided by some of the resistances. So, this helps a lot in uh, solving many, many problems. Now, for example, if you have, I will, I will take an example here. Suppose you have two resistors like this in series. And if it is connected across a 10 volt battery, and if the resistances are, uh, um, say, it is, uh, okay, I will connect 12 volt battery, and uh, I will connect, this is 3 ohm and 1 ohm. Now, what is V1 and V2? V1, V2. So, always, we have to analyze any problem, in a, as we take it uh, in our uh, common uh, uh, ways. So, if V1 and V2 are the voltages across R1 and R2. So, if you are asked to find out what is V1 and V2, you can uh, apply this formula. Voltage across the first resistor is equal to main voltage into resistance of the same resistor. You see, the difference between current divider rule and the voltage divider rule is, in voltage divider rule, you get the main voltage into resistance of the same resistor. Here, main current into resistance of the other resistor. This is common. Okay, main voltage into resistance of the same resistor divided by sum of the resistances, 3 plus 1, 4, this is 9 volt. And what is V2? V2 is equal to main voltage into resistance of the same resistor divided by, same resistor divided by sum of the resistances. So, this is 4, 3 is a 3 volt. And uh, sum this, it is 12 volt, right? Total is 12 volt. So, 9 volt is gi given to this. 3 volt is given to this. This is one way of solving the problem. So, when uh, you connect the two resistors in series, we have got these voltages 9 volt and 3 volt. Now, uh, sir, is there any need of uh, remembering this uh, voltage divider formula? Is it the only formula which gives you the answer? No, you need not do that. You can have another uh, shortcut method to solve this problem. How? So, we have V is equal to IR and you know that uh, in series current is same. So, forget about this because if you ask both the resistors current is same. So, V is directly proportional to R. Voltage is directly proportional to resistance. That means in what way resistances are, in what ratio resistances are, in the same ratio you will get voltages also. For example, in what ratio the resistances are here? In the ratio 3 is to 1. So, R1 is to R2 uh, is 3 is to 1. Then how will you divide the voltages? Voltage has to be divided in the ratio 3 is to 1 because it has to be divided in the same ratio. But we have 12 volts. So, 12 volt have to be, has to be divided in the ratio 3 is to 1. How to divide 12 volt in the ratio as the same resistances? That means uh, 3 is to 1. So, if you want to divide 12 volt into 3 is to 1 ratio, divide it into 4 parts. So, out of the 4 parts, 3 plus 1, because you should have 4 parts, and out of the 4 parts, 3 parts part has to be given to this, 1 part has to be given to this, right? So, out of 4 parts, you have to give 3 parts to the first voltage, what is out of 12? So, it is 4 3s are 3, 3 3s are 9, so this is 9 volt. 
and uh, out of four parts you have to give one part to the other resistor and what is out of 12 so this is uh, uh, 3 so this is 3 volt so 9 volt is to 3 volt or even without panning down anything even without writing anything you can solve this how yeah, the same method just uh, see if you want to imagine it and you, if you want to do it mentally the calculations you must have the uh, idea of this one you must write this and do this in the beginning then you will uh, solve uh, it uh, mentally sir how to divide this the formula required is v equal to ir i is a constant v is directly proportional to resistance if v is directly proportional to resistance Resistances are in the ratio 3 is to 1. So voltage should be in the ratio 3 is to 1. Divide 12 volt in the 3 is to 1 ratio. Totally you should have 4 parts, 3 plus 1. So out of the 4 parts, divide 12 volt into 4 parts, 3, 3, 3, 3. You can divide it into 4 parts as 3, 3, 3, 3. Give 3 parts to this, 3, 3, 3, 9 volt. Give 1 part to this, 3 volt. So this is the idea behind this. So, uh, you can uh, apply all these uh, ideas and you can uh, uh, move on to the problems, okay. And even um, in the voltage, uh, uh, sorry, current uh, divider rule also you can uh, use the same method. I will give you a procedure. Suppose you have two resistors, say 2 ohm and 5 ohm. Two resistors, 2 ohm and 5 ohm are connected in parallel. So definitely current through 2 ohm will be more because it is a lesser resistance compared to this. Current through 3 ohm will be, uh, sorry, current through 5 ohm will be less because 5 ohm is greater than 2 ohm. Suppose I is the main current, say this is uh, uh, something uh, like uh, say 14, 21 ampere. Suppose this is 21 amperes, okay, did I say 3 ohm and, uh, okay, 3 ohm and 2 ohm, let it be 20 amperes, I'll change the uh, values. So 3 ohm and 2 ohm are the two resistances connected in parallel. Main current is 20 ampere. How much current will flow through this? How much current will flow through this? Either you can apply current divider rule or we can go for shortcut method. Simply use the uh, ratio procedure. You know that I is equal to V by R. And remember all these methods mathematically they are same everywhere only the physics concept will change you say, uh, now with this if I uh, explain it like this V is a constant for both they are in parallel so how is the relation I is inversely proportional to R if I is inversely proportional to R how will be the current ratio current ratio will be in the inverse ratio of resistances because I is inversely proportional to R. So go for R2 is to R1, then calculate I1 is to I2. It is not V1 by V2 is equal to R1 by R2. It is not in that ratio because when they are in series V equal to IR, I was constant. Now in parallel, it is I equal to V by R, V was constant. So I is inversely proportional to R. So select the formula first, see how the formula varies, and then apply it. So here it is, the current ratio is inverse ratio of resistances. Okay, now what is the inverse ratio of resistances? It is 3 by 2, right? I2 by I1 is 3 by 2. So total 20 amperes have to be divided into 5 parts. One part, three, three parts. One is three parts. Okay, here three part, here two part because it should be inverse ratio. So divide 20 ampere into five parts. How we do? How to divide 20 ampere into five parts? Four, four, uh, not four, 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 four. 20 amp, uh, yeah, four, 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 four. Right? Four plus four plus four plus four plus four. Is it 20? Right? Five parts. And give three parts to this inversely proportional to resistance. I1 by I2 is R2 by R1 ratio. So give three parts to this. Three parts means 12, 12 amperes. And give uh, two parts to this, 8 amperes. And totally this I1 plus I2 is equal to 20 amperes. It is over. So this is how you do ratio parts. Now, sir, can we apply that formula? Yes, it is possible. Current through any resistor, I1 is equal to main current 20 into resistance of the other resistor. I am finding I1. I want to write the resistance of the other resistor. Now, did you come to know why this is other resistor? Because it is a inversely proportional to resistance. Why it is the same resistor? 
V is directly proportional to resistance. That is the only difference. So I1 is equal to main current into resistance of the other resistor divided by sum of the resistances. Is it 12 ampere? Because fours are 3, 12. Current through the second resistor is equal to main current into resistance of the other resistor. I am finding out the current through this uh, 3 ohm resistance of the other resistor divided by sum of the resistances. 5, 3 plus 2. It is not equivalent, it is sum of the resistances. 5 fours are 8 amperes. So you can apply this formula. So, so this is the basic thing. And remember, you can use this. Sir, uh, can you use this mathematical concept everywhere? Definitely. Volume is inversely proportional to pressure. You know this. Ball's law. Here also you can apply the same formula. If volume is divided in the ratio 1 is to 2, pressure is divided in the ratio 2 is to 1. So uh, that is the concept. So we will go to uh, some of the questions now with this uh, as basic. And uh, you know the resistance is in parallel equation also. Uh, resistances in parallel and resistances in series equation okay okay right we will move on to the first uh, problem right see the problem if you look at the problem Right. The first problem says, what does it say? See the problem. Read the problem. I'll read it. A current of 0.25 amperes flows in the main circuit. The circuit is given. Now the resistance R is disconnected and then connected across 4 ohm resistance. So R is connected across 2 ohm first. Then it is disconnected and connected across 4 ohm. The current in the circuit now is so once R is disconnected and connected across the 4 ohm resistor, other way, definitely current will change because total resistance will change. So I will draw the circuit now, here, and you have understood what is the problem, okay? We will uh, draw the circuit. Of course, you, you need not worry if you have not noted down the problem. Uh, I will send the PDF format of uh, all those problems. Okay, so the problem is uh, like this. Okay, I'll do this. Uh, LCD has to be switched on. We will wait it. Wait for it. This is R, and this is two ohm, and uh, this is four ohm, and uh, here is the battery. This is a two volt, three ohm, two volt internal resistance, three ohm. Of course, okay. So in the beginning current is 0.25 amperes. So I is 0.25 amperes when the situation is like this. It is 0.25 amperes. Now, when this is disconnected and connected here, what is the current? That is their question, correct? So what we will do is, let us using this current for data, let us try to find out what is this R. So, main current is 0.25 amperes. You know this formula, I is equal to E divided by R plus R. So, as I explained, keep on writing it because I don't give you enough time to write after once the problem is finished. I don't give you separate time to copy all those things. You have to write the things as I explain. So, the circuit diagram, problem I will give it to you later. I will send the PDF. If you want the PDF, you just uh, uh, give me a message uh, to this number, okay? If you want the PDF of the format of the problem sheet, give a message to this number, okay? So I is equal to 0.25 amperes. Now, I is equal to E by R plus R. This is the total external resistance. I am not representing this R only. It is the total one. I is 0.25 equal to E 2 volt divided by R plus R, what is R total? 4 plus 3 plus and this total resistance. So how can I do that? 4 plus 3 is 7 plus this one. So 7 plus 2R divided by 2 plus R. Am I right? Now shall I take this as 1 by 4 instead of 0.25 I will take it as 1 by 4. So that things become easier. It is the easiest way of uh, solving. So let us take this as 1 by 4 because it is 0 0.25. Multiply this here. 8 volt is equal to, this comes here. This will be here. 7 plus 2R by 2 plus R. 
So simply don't look into the board, simply uh, don't waste the time. Take a paper and keep on writing it, right? Otherwise it is of no use. It will be very boring film otherwise, right? So if you want to, be ma you want it, want to make it very interesting, take a paper and write it. Now, shall I bring uh, 7 here? 8 minus 7 is 1, 1 is equal to 2R by 2 plus R. So what does this imply? 2 plus R is equal to 2R and uh, bring this R here, 2R minus R, so 2 is equal to R. So we have got R is equal to 2 ohm. Okay, this is uh, the resistance value. That is that resistance value. Now their question is, if this resistance is shifted across 4 ohm, what is the current? Just apply the formula again. Situation is changed, that's all. Nothing else uh, different. So shall we apply it? What is the current if the resistance R is connected across 4 ohm? I is equal to, same E by R plus R. E is 2 volt divided by external resistance plus internal resistance. Okay, uh, external resistance will be this R ohm coming across this and you know the value of R, that is 2. So 2 ohm coming here, right, it is this one, 2 ohm and this is 4 ohm. That R is connected across this one, now what is the current? Now it is a simple problem, E divided by R plus R, 3 plus 2, 5 plus this parallel, 5 plus R1, R2 divided by R1 plus R2. So what is the answer? I is equal to 2 divided by 5 plus 8 by 6. That is equal to 2 divided by 38 by 6. Am I right? What type of answers you have? Okay, you have it in the ratio. I is equal to 12 divided by 6 into 2 by 38. Right? So, if you divide it by 2, 6 divided by 19 amperes. So, answer is the first one. First answer. 6 by 19 amperes. Am I right? It is the um, problem. So, um, I don't assure you that the same problem will be asked in the exam. But these problems will teach you many ideas. Uh, how to uh, proceed forward, how to understand the sentence, what is their question, what I have to do, which formula, because so many formulas are in your brain, which formula has to be used and what is the uh, method of solving, everything is uh, very important, okay, did you get this now, right, what, we did, what did we do here is simply found out R using the current value given, once we got R, according to the question you have to shift R here and find out what is the current, okay, we will move on to the second question, Second one, yes, it is here, right, yes, in the circuit given, the voltmeter reads 3 volt, resistance of the voltmeter is, so what is the resistance of the voltmeter, resistance, uh, the voltmeter reads 3 volt, what is the resistance of the voltmeter? Okay, uh, and across the resistance, uh, across the resistance, there is a voltmeter. So I will draw the diagram. This is uh, six volt, and uh, no internal resistance, zero ohm, and here is three hundred ohm, three hundred ohm, and uh, here is uh, one uh, four hundred ohm. Okay, and uh, there is a parallel voltmeter here. Voltmeter reads, uh, it is uh, 3 volts, yes, this reads 3 volt. Right, so what is the resistance of the voltmeter? So they have frankly asked you, what is the resistance of the voltmeter, right? What is the value of this uh, resistance of this one? Now, why do we use voltmeter? Voltmeter is an instrument used to measure the potential difference across any instrument or any component, sorry. Now, uh, that voltmeter is just a measuring instrument. It shouldn't alter the things whatever they are present in the uh, uh, circuit already. Suppose even if you don't connect the voltmeter, it shouldn't uh, change the value of voltage across this resistor. 
because this is only a measuring instrument, right? So once you measure the mass of uh, uh, a stone, the mass of the stone shouldn't decrease. The weighing machine shouldn't uh, uh, use its mass for measuring the mass. So it shouldn't disturb. Once your uh, heartbeat is measured, when the using a stethoscope, when the, once the stethoscope is kept in your heart, the heartbeat shouldn't change because stethoscope is a just a measuring instrument and it is not allowed to change the heartbeat. It is only a measuring instrument. So measuring devices shouldn't change the existing values. If it is so, what should be the resistance of the voltmeter? Because already some current is passing through this 400 ohm. That will produce a voltage drop across 400 ohm. And that current into resistance will give you the voltage. But as soon as the voltmeter is connected, a small part of the current will flow through the voltmeter also. Now what about the current through 400 ohm? It will change. So in order to measure the voltage or potential difference, we connected a voltmeter, but it started absorbing the current from the existing value of current and it had started showing different values of voltages. And this is not a good voltmeter. So a very good voltmeter shouldn't draw much current from the existing value when it is connected across the circuit. So if it is so, if it shouldn't draw much current, then the resistance of the voltmeter should be very, very high Practically speaking, it should be so high that it shouldn't draw any current at all. What the current was flowing through this before connecting the voltmeter should be the same current even after connecting the voltmeter. Sir, if it is so, how will this voltmeter measure it? Of course, if you want this voltmeter to measure the voltage across this, at least it should draw the small amount of current, very small amount of current so that even if you remove that current from the main current, main current doesn't change very much. So, such a voltmeter we should have. So, voltmeter, if it has to draw very, very small current, it should have a very high resistance. Okay. Sir, we say ideal voltmeter, the best voltmeter should have infinite resistance so that current drawn is nothing and the original current is not at all disturbed. But now they say, the question, you see the question once, in the circuit given, the voltmeter we read 3 volt, Resistance of the voltmeter is, they are asking you a resistance and the options give you some resistance, it is not very very high, it is not like uh, uh, thousands mega ohms or so or 10,000 ohms, it is simply 1000 ohms, 1200, 1000, 1000, it is not in 10,000 or mega ohms, it is not very high resistance, it is some resistance, that means that some resistance you have to calculate, it is not a very good voltmeter. That means we have to take that this voltmeter also has some resistance, okay? So what is the resistance of the voltmeter? So one, when you solve one problem, you will get so many things related to that. I may be spending much time in one problem. I can give you the formula, I can uh, ask you to calculate. But that is not the thing in entrance exam. You must be able to understand it so that a problem which is very close to this or that idea if it is to be applied in another problem and if that problem comes in the examination, you must be able to solve it. So if this voltmeter is having resistance according to the question, when it is connected here, definitely the current will change. So what is its resistance? Now the data is uh, this battery resistance and this reads 3 volt. Of course, these two are in parallel, this X ohm, X ohm resistance of the voltmeter and the 400 ohm are in parallel. So voltage across this and voltage across this must be same. Now we will analyze it like this. See, this is 6 volt. No internal resistance. What do you mean by no internal resistance? Battery doesn't consume any voltage. It doesn't uh, drop any potential difference across its terminals. If you measure, uh, if it, by taking a voltmeter, if you measure the voltage here, no voltage is across the battery. Battery doesn't consume any voltage. Its internal resistance is zero. So very good battery. Okay. You congratulate that battery because its resistance is very less. Very good one. Okay. Then what does it do with 6 volt? It is ready to donate 6 volt to all the things which are connected to the cap by this battery. It is ready to donate the 6 volt out, out of 6 volt some voltage here, 6 volt some voltage here. But here it is given 3 volt. What is the remaining out of 6 volt? It is 3 volt. So this is uh, the remaining voltage 3 volt. Correct? So battery will uh, give 3 volt here also because already 3 volt has been consumed out of 6 volt remaining 3 volt should be here now whenever you have many 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 components in series you know what is the constant in uh, the components in series it is the current 
Now, when three, as is 300 ohm and 400 ohm and all these things, when the whole set is in series, if you can replace these two resistances by a single resistance and 300 ohm, when they are in series, current should be same. That means, if you are able to find out current through one component in series connection, you have won the game because current through other components must be same. So, in series, if one resistor gives you a clue that current is this much, remember, other resistors will also have the same current. In parallel, if one resistor gives you a clue that this is the voltage, all resistors will have the same voltage. Here, this gives the clue now. Now, how did you come across this clue? Because out of 6 volt, they say that this is 3. Remaining 3 should be here. So, what is the current in the circuit? Current in the circuit is I equal to V by R. I concentrate only on this. I take this 300 ohm. I ask 300 ohm. What is the current through you? Sir, I have a voltage. I have a resistance. Calculate it. V is 3 volt and this is 100. So, current is 1 by, sorry, 300. 1 by 100 ampere. Let it be like this only. 0 0.01 ampere. Let it be. Now, this resistor has given you the clue that current is 1 by 100 ampere. Same current should flow through all the components. If it is so, when that 1 by 100 ampere flows through this set of resistors, this set of resistors, it should produce this 3 volt. Am I right? So, when you have two resistors, say, 5 ohm. I will, I will just divert it to another uh, uh, problem and say this is uh, 3 ohm and uh, suppose uh, uh, voltage, some current is flowing here, voltage here is uh, say some uh, 15 volt, right? What should be the voltage here if it is asked? Definitely you can calculate because if through 5 ohm this current should produce 15 volt means I equal to V by R V is 15 divided by R I, this is 3 amperes, you know it, when the same 3 ampere flows through this, it should produce 9 volt. Am I right? In the same way here, this is just a diversion, okay, in the same way here, this current can produce 3 volt here, same current totally should produce 3 volt here, because this is given. That means, I will do it like this, again I will apply V equal to IR. Very important relation V, I, R. Okay, voltage. Voltage should be 3 volt. Current, 1 by 100 amperes into R. What R? Total R. Because this 3 volt is across both. You can't put only 400 ohm. Through 400, it is not this current which is flowing. That, for, for that 1 by 100 divides into two like this and a small current flows through 400. Remaining current flows through this. So, through the whole set it is 1, 1 by 100. So, I into R. What is R? 400 into X because uh, this is in parallel divided by 400 plus X. This is what is asked for you. What is asked for you to connect or uh, find out? That is X. So, this is four times. Let me make it very simple. Okay. Now, multiply this cross multiply. 3 into 3 into 3 into 400 plus x. So I will multiply this 1200 plus 3x. Ah, yeah, 3x, yes, correct. 1200 plus 3x is equal to 4x, correct? And uh, minus 3x here, 1200 is equal to x. So, X is 1200 ohm. Do we have that? 1200? Yes, it is the first option in the answer. 1200, right? So, you see how many things you have in this. Don't worry, we are uh, uh, going very slow and I want to explain each and everything because you should be very firm in all the types of uh, te techniques and the tricks that we use here. Now, coming back, sir. Uh, do we have any shortcuts here? Definitely, we have a shortcut, right? Um, okay, sir, how did you conclude that it is 1200? Without pending down, you can do this. How? It's very simple. One thing is, you have to do it like this, you see. Uh, out of 6, of course, this is not the data in the problem. Out of 6 volt, since it has no internal resistance, this battery is ready to deliver all its voltage to the components which are connected. 
it is ready to deliver everything it doesn't consume any voltage okay out of six three volt has been given already here it is told in the problem okay and remaining what is the remaining voltage that is six minus three that is three volt that is what we have written now you look into these voltages three volt three volt both same if two resistors in series if they develop the same voltage what does it mean the two resistors must be same otherwise how can it happen v equal to ir if both the voltages having uh, sorry both the resistors have, are having same voltage means they should have the same resistance however current is same in series i am taking all this resistance as a single resistance 400x by four, uh, 400 plus x this parallel combination is taken as a single one and the same current is made to flow through both the resistors of course it flows through the resistors and voltages are same so resistance must be same now this is 300 if this combination also has to have 300 what resistance you have to connect here finish that's all you have to do so if this is 300 if the other resistance is 300 if this also have to be uh, has to be 300 that is 400 into x divided by 400 plus x that's a, uh, that also has to be 300 otherwise voltages can't be equal so di directly you can jump to the last step here you will get the same step here 300 and the hundreds will cancel and you will get 3 into 4 1200 plus 3x equal 4x finally that the same so what the resistance you have here same resistance will occur here since voltages are same suppose the voltages are different for example if it is given out of 6 volt 2 volt is read by the voltmeter what is the voltmeter resistance then here it will be 4 volt now you can't compare the resistances are same as same they are different okay so that is the one problem we will move on to the next problem yes third one don't worry uh, if uh, we are solving the problems a little bit slowly but we want the things to be very firm or it should be printed very uh, firmly in your brain okay now see the problem read the problem in the circuit galvanometer g reads zero it doesn't read any current of course you can't have the value of current in the galvanometer but still it can show some reading it reads zero if the internal resistance of each battery is zero what must be the resistance of the wire marked r so there is a wire marked r what should be its resistance okay we will draw that you draw it in your paper what you have in front of you draw it because uh, in current electricity you can't see the movie and learn everything you must draw it okay right now the problem runs like this so here is a 4 ohm resistor and here is another resistor here is a battery i'll draw a single battery and uh, here is the galvanometer and then another battery like this okay i will show it by a single battery make it simpler okay resistances are 10 ohm r and 2 volt 10 ohm and r 2 volt and uh, battery main battery 6 volt okay their question is g is not giving any reading Resi uh, uh, that current read by the galvanometer is zero and uh, if the internal resistance of each battery okay if the in internal resistance of each battery is zero okay six volt zero ohm and uh, two volt zero ohm then what should be the uh, resistance of the wire marked r uh, if you have some uh, theory within your uh, brain a little bit of theory is enough problems become very simple this problem becomes very simple now if the galvanometer doesn't read any reading then what happens what is the meaning of that no current flows through this path right i is zero this path i is zero then where is the current all the current starting from here okay i will name this as i dash this i and this i even the smallest component of this i doesn't enter here otherwise galvanometer would have shown some reading now it is not showing any reading so the full current should flow through this i and this is i dash that i dash is zero should flow like this even the part of this current shouldn't flow like this now sir will it happen so is it possible definitely it may be possible because the uh, current through this and uh, through this a part of the current may flow through this but this current will cancel 
suppose one part of this, suppose 8 ampere flows through this and are remaining out of 8, uh, say 5 ampere flows through this, remaining five, uh, 3 amperes here, this battery may also send 3 amperes here. So those 3 amperes are equal and opposite, current through the galvanometer is 0, that is possible. So here now all the current must flow through this, finally all the current of this equivalently even if I say that it gets branched, that is not possible now. Just I have given you an example, but all the current must flow through this circuit and no current should flow through here. So in the example I have given if 8 ampere flows through here and uh, uh, three, 5 here, remaining 3 here. But by the time it reaches here, it becomes uh, 8 only because one part of the current through this may flow through this one and uh, it will cancel this one. But here it will get cancelled, but remaining part of the current will flow through this also. So totally, this I will be maintained throughout in the circuit, okay. So you, you just uh, take it like this way now. If the internal resistance of the, uh, sorry, uh, current through the galvanometer G, if it is zero, no current flows through this galvanometer, then all the current of this battery should flow here, like this. Now, if you want to find out that current, now their question is to find out R. Okay. Uh, now, another thing is this 2 volt should be the voltage here because you see galvanometer is connected here. It is not showing any current, that's all. It is connected to this uh, part of the circuit and this 2 volt battery is here. Definitely, if you connect a voltmeter here, that voltmeter should read 2 volt because that voltmeter is also across this battery. So voltage across this R must be equal to 2 volt. There is no way at all because if you connect your voltmeter here across these two points, that voltmeter also appears across this battery. So it should be 2 volt. So once you get the voltage across this resistor as 2 volt, now, if I draw this part of the circuit, which is of interest for us now, this is 6 volt and this is 10 ohm, you can keep on writing 10 ohm and this is R, since no current passes to the other part, I will leave it and if this is R, okay, I will write it here, Vr is equal to 2 volt, so 6 volt, 10 ohm and R and okay. Right, now the voltage across this is, if I connect a voltmeter here, it is 2 volt. Am I right? This is 2 volt. Now, out of 6 volt, 2 volt has been dropped here. What is the remaining volt out, out of 6 volt? Since it has no internal resistance, it will not consume itself any voltage. Everything voltage is delivered outside. Then it should be 4 volt here, right? Out of 2 volt, because this should be 2 volt here, out of 6 volt, if 2 volt is dropped here, remaining 4, uh, sorry, 4 volt, remaining 4 volt should be here, correct? Out of 6, 2 here, 4 volt should be here. Now, here this resistor is ready to help you. It will tell you what is the current. Well, what is the final question? What is the current through the, what must be the resistance R? What should be this resistance? If you want to know resistance, you must know the uh, current because one value we have got, voltage. If you know current, you can apply Ohm's law. So how to find out current? This resistor will help you to find out the current. So I is equal to V by R. I'm applying only to this case, okay? I'm applying only to this case now or I will apply here, I is equal to V by R, what is V across this, 4, R is 10, so this is the current. Now, will you agree that the same current will flow through this R also? Because they have told that no current flows through the galvanometer, so all the currents must flow through the resistor R, that means uh, that is uh, 4 by 10 ampere, and when that 4 by 10 ampere passes through R, should produce 2 volt, what we have measured here. So. Now we will apply V equal to IR to this circuit. V is equal to IR and you know that here V is a 2 volt and current is a 4 by 10 amperes and R that is what you have to find out. Of course it is solved and it is 2 za to 5 za and R is equal to 5 ohm, right? Do you have the option 5 ohm in that? So that is the third option. We have the option, third option 5 ohm. So, just see the problem once. I will give you the problems later. You just tell me, I will send you a PDF. 
So that is phi ohm. Now coming back to the problem, I will just narrate you how it is done. So according to the data, no current flows through the galvanometer. Galvanometer is standing only at zeroth position. If it is so, current through the galvanometer is not flowing means all the current of this battery should flow through this. Okay? And then, since this is in parallel, this part is in parallel with this battery, whatever the voltmeter you connect it here, it should read the voltage across this as well as voltage across this. So this should be 2 volt. Once you get that it is 2 volt, out of 6 volt, remaining 2 volt, uh, remaining after supplying 2 volt here, remaining 4 volt should be here. Once you get that this is 4 volt, you can find out what is current through this resistor. Once you get the current through the resistor, you can find out what is this resistance because same current should flow here also. So that is the procedure. Okay? We will move on to the next problem then.